Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're taking our second look through the original Asterix stories. And this time it's going to be books four, five and six in the original Asterix series. I'm very, very much looking forward to looking through these and reviewing them. So sit back, relax and let's get to it. Book four, Asterix the Gladiator, published in 1964. While stopping at the Roman camp of Compendium, Prefect Odius Asparagus wants one of the indomitable Gauls as a present for Julius Caesar. Because none of the others can be captured, Centurion Gracchus Army Surplus decides on Cacophonix the Bard. Soldiers sent by the Centurion, although driven away by Cacophonix's singing at first, counteract this by stuffing parsley in their ears and capture him easily. A young boy named Pickamix from the village raises the alarm to Asterix and Oblix, and the Gauls attack Compendium, but learn that the prefect has already left in his galley with Cacophonix. Asterix and Oblix therefore board a ship with economic crisis, the Phonian merchant, who agrees to take them to Rome after they save him from pirates. In Rome, after Cacophonix has subjected the slaves in the prefect's galley to his bad singing, the prefect presents him to Julius Caesar, but when Caius Fatuus, the gladiator's trainer, declares Cacophonix unfit to serve as a gladiator, Caesar decides to throw the bard to the lions. Upon arrival in Rome, Asterix and Oblix befriend Instant Mix, a Gaulish cook working in Rome, and visit the public baths. There, Caius Fatuus decides they would be perfect candidates for the gladiator's fight in the Circus Maximus, and he arranges to have them captured. That night, Asterix and Oblix visit Instant Mix in his insula, where he identifies the location of Cacophonix. The next morning, the ghouls' first attempt at rescuing the bard fails when they raid the circus prison and discover that Cacophonix has been transferred to a lower basement. Caius Fatuus has his men try to ambush them in groups of three, but Asterix and Oblix defeat them with ease. Caius Fatuus then offers a reward of 10,000 sesterci to any citizen who captures Asterix and Oblix, but the two of them volunteer as gladiators to infiltrate the following games, and Fatuus places them in training under his assistant, Insalubrius. Soon the Gauls demoralise Insalubrius and irritate Cassius Fatuus by having the other gladiators play guessing games instead of training. Later, when Fatuus plans the games to Julius Caesar, the Gauls go on a stroll with Cassius Fatuus reluctantly as their guide. On the eve before the games, Asterix and Oblix visit Cacophonix in his cell and inform him of their intentions to free him and the gladiators. The next day, during the chariot races, Asterix and Oblix substitute themselves for an inebriated contestant and win the race. As Cacophonix is put into the arena to be killed by the lions, he sings to the Romans and thus frightens the lions into retreat, whereupon Caesar orders the gladiators' competition to begin. When Asterix, Oblix and the gladiators introduce Caesar to their guessing game, and Caesar insists on a martial contest, Asterix challenges a cohort of Caesar's own guard, and the two Gauls win easily. Seeing that the audience are amused, Caesar releases the three Gauls and grants them Fatius as a prisoner. Soon afterwards, the four men meet back up with economic crisis, and Asterix surprises him and his men by having Cassius Fatuus row the ship back to the Gaulish village alone. After a brief journey, plus a second run-in with the pirates which sinks their ship, the Gauls arrive home and economic crisis keeps his promise to return Cassius Fatuus to Rome. The villagers then celebrate the return of their heroes with a banquet, only with Cacophonix having to sit it out bound and gagged after offering to sing a song to celebrate his triumphant return. So a few points of interest in this volume. Um, it's noteworthy in the Asterix series as the first in which Oblix says his famous catchphrase, these Romans are crazy. Oblix's helmet game, for the first time he collects helmets from the Romans that he bashes, trying to outdo Asterix, who never really shows much interest in it. The pre-fight advertisements, drink a pint of wine a day, are referring to the TV milk adverts of the time at least in the mid-60s England, with the uh, drink a pint of milk a day. This is one of the few stories in which the banquet is held at the end during the day. So my thoughts, well, I really love this one. Easily my favourite so far. I enjoyed the scene set at sea and when Asterix and Oblix finally get to Rome, just how good the city looked. And that's just down to the artwork. It just looks fantastic. 
Um, the overall appearance of the story seems to have taken a massive leap forward since the last book, with Uderzo's artwork seemingly more finely tuned and definitely looking more polished. I also really enjoyed the way Asterix and Oblix became friends with the other gladiators and genuinely wanted to help them out. Great, great fun, this one. Book 5, Asterix and the Banquet, published in 1965. Inspector, General Overanxious, arrives in the fortified Roman camp of Compendium on a mission from Julius Caesar to lead the local garrison against the village of indomitable Gauls. Centurion Lotus Eatus warns him the Gauls are dangerous, but the attack goes ahead only to be soundly repelled. Undeterred, Overanxious erects a stockade around the village to prevent the inhabitants from spreading their rebellious ideas through Gaul. Asterix bets that he and Oblix will escape the village and go on a tour of Gaul, collecting regional culinary specialities for a banquet upon their return. Overanxious promises to raise the stockade if they succeed. Asterix maps out a route while Oblix fetches a large bag to hold their shopping. The two break through the stockade while the other villagers create a diversion by attacking the barricade on another front. Overanxious has a rider dispatched to alert the entire occupation army to be on the lookout for the pair. So their first stop is Rotomagus, which is Rune. Asterix and Oblix make their way to the Normandy region, where a Roman patrol recognises them. They flee and escape via a wealthy Roman couple yacht down the Seine, while the patrol is stimmied by the unhelpful vague responses of local residents. Letitia, which is Paris. Upon arrival, Asterix and Oblix negotiate the traffic jams and buy a ham from a pork butcher shop, where from this point on, Dogmatics, unnamed until the next adventure, follows the duo through Gaul. Fearing detection by a Roman patrol, they purchase a gleaming huge chariot and a handsome horse from a dishonest salesman to make their escape. They soon discover that the horse is slow and only painted black, while the chariot loses its luster and a wheel. The duo gets back on track by knocking out the driver of a Roman breakdown chariot and stealing his vehicle. Camaracum, Cambrai. The Gauls stop in a humbug shop to buy boiled sweets, but are spotted by a Roman patrol, which they beat up, trashing the shop in the process. Unfazed by the damage, the shopkeeper says Gauls are aware of the bet, and then demonstrates his solidarity by knocking out the patrol leader. Back on the road, Asterix and Oblix get past another patrol by posing as breakdown men, towing a legionary, sponge fingers, in his damaged chariot, only to then cast him aside on the road. Reams which is Reims. Asterix and Oblix abandon the breakdown chariot and buy some wines. They are found by Sponge Fingers, who has recovered from his accident, but Asterix knocks him down by using a cork exploded from an ampora. Dividorum, which is Metz. Leaving Reims, the pair detours into a forest where the scent of roast boar leads them to the house of Unpatriotics, who feeds and then betrays them. Roman soldiers come to the house but capture only Asterix, as Oblix is out hunting boar. When Oblix discovers the ruse, he knocks out a legionary to get him prison too, and rescues Asterix. After beating up the Romans at the prison, Asterix declares it is too late to buy any of Dividorum's specialities, and decides to buy some in Lungdindum. As they leave, the Gauls commandeer a Roman postal cart. Lungdindum, which is Lyon. The two Gauls abandon the postal cart and, after crashing through a Roman blockade, meet Jelly Babix, head of the resistance movement. He pretends to betray the Gauls to prefect poisonous fungus, but lures the Romans into a maze of back alleys where the legionnaires become hopelessly lost. The prefect's plan to leave behind a trail of pebbles to find his way out backfires when a legionary picks up the pebbles. Jelly Babix gives the duo a pair of sausages and meatballs and arranges a chariot for them. Nice, which is Nice. En route to Nice, Asterix and Oblix become stuck in holiday traffic bound for the Gaulish Riviera and stop at an inn for lunch. In Nice, they buy salad and are once again spotted by a Roman patrol. They escape by sea and commandeer a vacation in Lutetian's rowboat. Marsilla, which is Marseille. The Gauls stop at Caesar Drink Like a Fix's Inn, where aside from having goat's milk and boar, they buy fish stew. Again, the pair make a premature departure when a boy warns of approaching Romans, but Drink Like a Fix and his friends stall the soldiers by blocking the road with a game of petanki. Tulosa, which is Toulouse. En route to Tulosa, Asterix and Oblitz stop for the night, unaware that they are in a Roman camp. 
Next morning they beat up the Romans, but then surrender after learning the centurion intended to take them to Tolosa by cart. The Gauls are chained up, but repeatedly break their chains, much to the blacksmith's dismay. Out on the road, the centurion rides on ahead to bring over the prefect, but in his absence, Asterix and Oblix beat up the Romans again, make off with the cart, and buy sausages in Tolosa. Aginum, which is Arjun. The Romans announce a 50,000 sesterce reward for information leading to the arrest of Asterix and Oblix. An unscrupulous innkeeper, up to tricks, invites the two Gauls to his inn, where he gives them a bag of prunes and serves them drugged boar. Suspecting betrayal, Asterix orders up to tricks to taste the boar, which causes him to fall unconscious, although Oblix is unaffected despite eating the rest of the boar. The pair leave the cart in Agidum and take the horses, one of which collapses under the combined weight of Oblix and the bag. Bird de Gala, which is Bordeaux. En route, the Gauls rest for the night by a roadside, where their bag is stolen by two Roman highwaymen, villainous and unscrupulous. The next morning, Asterix and Oblix pursue the thieves who are caught by a Roman patrol and mistaken them for the Gauls. In the town square of Berdigla, General Mottus shows the Gaulish outlaws to the public, only to realise he has the wrong men when Asterix and Oblix arrive to reclaim their bag. The public attacks General Motus and his men, while the heroes regain their bag and buy oysters and white wine. Geo Scribberton, Le Croquet. Before leaving Berdigla, Asterix and Oblix spy a ship offloading menhirs and meet Captain Senior Cervix, who is honoured to let them aboard as Oblix helps unload the menhirs before the ship's departure. At sea, the ship runs into the recurring pirates whose own ship is sunk by the Gauls. On arrival in Geoscribatum, Senior Cervix smuggles the Gauls ashore in sacks. Asterix and Oblix get out when a Roman patrol is passing by, but they beat up the Romans and escape. Eventually, Asterix and Oblix reach the stockade outside the village after beating up the Romans yet again. Give them a message to tell over anxious they have won their side of the bet. That night, Asterix shows the food and wine to over anxious and Lotus Eatus before demonstrating the village's speciality, the uppercut, which knocks out over anxious. Moments before the punch, Dogmatix barks for the first time, making Oblix notice him. Dogmatix is given a bone and the villagers enjoy their banquet. The idea of the story and its French title was inspired by the Tour de France bicycle race. The sack carried by Oblix reflects the race leader's jersey colour, which is yellow, the mayor jaune, with a patch for the number. The Latin phrase, exeg momentum air perinus, is uttered by a legionnaire during the construction of a wall, which is on page 7. This is a reference to the same quote made by the Roman poet Horace. Translated, it means, I have erected a monument more lasting than bronze. Fun is poked at various French regional stereotypes. The inhabitants of Normandy are shown as being unable to give a direct answer and smothering their food in creamy sauce. The traffic jams in Paris, Letitia in the comic strip, are spoofed. The inhabitants of Letitia are shown going to Nice for their summer holiday. Oblix refers to Nice as the, the Gaulish Riviera. Like modern Parisian travellers, the visitors from Letitia cause huge traffic jams with their carts on the road into Nice and huge crowds on the beach. The maze of Bacalis in Lugdunum is a reference to the Trabules of Lyon and the role that they played during the French Resistance. The idea of using pebbles to find one way back is a reference to Hansel and Gretel or the French fairy tale Hopper My Fun. However, a helpful Roman soldier picks up the pebbles for the Roman official, trapping him in the maze also. Now, on the cover of the album, the sack is actually coloured incorrectly. It's uh, coloured green with a yellow patch. Uh, Dogmatics is introduced in this book. He is first seen outside the pork butcher's shop in Letitia. He follows Asterix and Oblix, who don't, do not notice him during the entire journey, all across Gaul, back to their village. Oblix notices him before the victory feast because he barks for the very first time and is rewarded with a bone. Dogmatics was originally supposed to be a literal running gag for this story alone. However, the authors decided he should stay in the series as a mascot, thus violating Goscinny's original No Pets rule. In the first version, the tour was supposed to go the other way round, with the locations visited in reverse order. The candy owner at Canberra sings the Beatles song Golden Slumbers, after Asterix and Oblix knock out the Roman patrol. In October 2017, the book's original cover illustration, signed by the authors, was sold at a Paris auction for a record 1.4 million euros.
and they do never get Dividorum specialities like Harcouture or Pate or even Quiche. So my thoughts on this one, I thought it was great fun, although it did seem a bit by the numbers and repetitive as our heroes visit each town, defeat some Romans and then move on to the next place. It was nice to see some continuity though from the previous stories and once again the script was beautifully drawn. I enjoyed the similarities to the Tour de France, although I wish there had been a few more stages. It was a great concept and it's fun watching the pair travelling around in chariots. Some genuine funny laugh out moments had me chuckling quite a bit reading this one. Book 6, Asterix and Cleopatra, published in 1965. This book begins with an argument between Cleopatra, Queen of Egypt, and Julius Caesar. As a triumphant invader, Caesar belittles the Egyptian people and suggests that Egypt as a realm is past its best. Infuriated, Cleopatra makes a wager with Caesar, promising to build a new palace in Alexandria within three months. Cleopatra summons Edifis, who claims to be the best architect in Egypt. She promises Edifice that if he builds the palace on time, he will be covered with gold. If he fails, he will be a meal for the sacred crocodiles. Edifice responds to this assignment by enlisting the help of the ghouls, Asterix and Oblix, Getafix and Dogmatics. Thanks to Getafix and his magic potion, the work goes forward on schedule. Despite multiple attempts by Edifice's arch-rival Artifice to sabotage the construction after Edifice says he doesn't want his help, claiming Artifice works people too hard. Artifice tells the workers to demand less whipping, which would slow construction. However, Getafix gives the workers magic potion. Artifice bribes the stone delivery man to throw his load away before Oblix beats him up, causing him to reveal the truth. A henchman tries to lock the ghouls inside a pyramid, but Dogmatics helps them find their way out. He subsequently tries to frame the ghouls by sending a poisoned cake to Cleopatra, but Getafix makes an antidote, enabling the ghouls to eat it, then cures the taster and claims eating too much rich food was giving him a bad stomach. Edifice is kidnapped and hidden in a sarcophagus in the house of Artifice, but Oblix frees him. Ad- Artifice and his henchmen are forced to work on the palace, but without a magic potion. Just before the palace is due to be completed, Caesar intervenes by sending legions to arrest the ghouls, after he realises the three ghouls are in Egypt, when a spy disguises himself as a worker and sees the effects of the magic potion. The ghouls fight off the Roman soldiers, but the commanding officer proceeds to shell the building with his catapults. In desperation, Asterix and Dogmatics deliver the news to Cleopatra, A furious Cleopatra then hurries to the construction site to berate Caesar. Caesar's legions are ordered to fix the damage they caused without any magic potion to help them, and the palace is successfully completed on time. Cleopatra wins her bet and covers Edifice with gold. Edifice and Artifice reconcile and agree to build pyramids together, and Cleopatra gives Getafix some papyrus manuscripts from the Library of Alexandria as a gift. The Gauls return, but Vital Statistics criticises Oblix trying to give an Egyptian style point to Menhers. In most Asterix books, Oblix is not permitted to drink the magic potion because he fell into a cauldron of magic potion in his childhood, resulting in a permanent effect, and Getafix fears that giving Oblix any more potion would have an unpredictable effect on him. However, in this book, Getafix makes an exception due to an extraordinary requirement, the need to force open a solid stone door inside a pyramid, which apparently even Oblix's regular level of strength is incapable of doing. Oblix notices no difference, but keeps asking for more potion in subsequent volumes. The recurring pirate characters appear in this book, though on this occasion they sink their own ship rather than endure a fight with the ghouls. The captain's son, Eryx, seen in the previous book, Asterix and the Banquet, is mentioned as having been left as a deposit to pay for the short-lived ship. Oblix's dog, Dogmatics, is named for the first time in this story. It is also the first story in which Dogmatics takes a significant role, rescuing the heroes from a maze inside a pyramid. On page 33, Artifice is reading the Daily Nile newspaper, which shows the comics P. Tarzan and P. Nuts. So my thoughts. It was good to see the story start out in Gaul in winter. I think this is the first time we've seen actual snow in the books. I absolutely loved the Egyptian decor, the buildings, the grandeur, the colours, all of it excellent. When some of the Egyptians speak, it comes out as hieroglyphics, which are translated in the box below. I chuckled when I saw Oblix pull the nose off the Sphinx, so it looks accurate as seen today. 
Interesting to see Cleopatra's grand entrance looking a lot like the classic scene from the Elizabeth Taylor movie, which was released a couple of years before this book was published. You can definitely feel the influence of this movie on the entire story. Also, this volume was longer than all the previous volume stories, at 48 pages instead of 40. Really enjoyable this one, I think perhaps my favourite so far. Now the editions that I have are these beautiful hardback ones that were published in the UK by Orion. They are all numbered along the spine so you can read them or collect them in order. The colours are bright and bold with the interior pages an absolute joy to behold and certainly these are the versions I would recommend you buy. I'll put links to these down below uh, in the description. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed this latest video. If you have, do please give it the thumbs up and do please consider subscribing if you'd like to see a regular Asterix video once a month. Thanks for watching today and I shall look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.